this time, we are going to reconvene the meeting of the World Township Board of Education. If you could all please rise for the flag salute. Before we start this evening's meeting, the board would like to address some issues that have been raised by several members of the community as to Ms. Dyer's last year in the district. The board will be undertaking a superintendent search in the coming months, and the details of that process will be reviewed by the board at the conclusion of this school year, and more details are to follow. In addition, in order to ensure that there are no misunderstandings or mis misinterpretations as to the superintendent's planned departure from the district at the end of the 2019-2020 school year, the board intends on adopting a resolution at next week's public meeting that reads as follows. Whereas Cheryl Dyer, Superintendent of Schools for Walt Township School District, has tendered her letter of retirement on May 21, 2019, with an effective date of June 30, 2020, be it resolved that the Walt Township Board of Education shall provide written notification to Cheryl Dyer by June 30, 2019, that she will not be reappointed at the end of the current term, June 30, 2020, in order to meet all contractual and statutory notification requirements. Be it further resolved that the board secretary is hereby authorized to provide this resolution to Cheryl Dyer as written notification no later than June 30, 2019. The purpose of this resolution is to put to rest any concerns as to the status of Mrs. Dyer's contract and that the Wall School District will be moving forward for uh, forward finding a new superintendent for a term that will begin on July 1, 2020. Since this evening's meeting has been previously advertised as no action being taken, the board intends to adopt this resolution that was just read at the June 25th, 2019 meeting. Hopefully this will permit all stakeholders to move on to the next stage in the process of finding a new superintendent. Um, this evening we have the pleasure of recognizing um, a number of students and faculty members for a number of really wonderful reasons, but before we get to that, uh, we're going to have some program evaluation highlights by Dr. Gleason. Uh, if the board would like to move from the dais to the reserved seats for this part, that would be great. Good evening, everyone, and I'd like to thank the members of the Board of Education for allowing the Office of Curriculum and Instruction to present the highlights of this year's program evaluations. We went through three program evaluations, uh, math in grades 6 through 12, K-5 science, and K-5 health and phys ed. This was an extraordinary undertaking, uh, not just from the central office administration, but most importantly by the teachers in the district. This was a voluntary effort by the teachers to put forth a considerable amount of time in analyzing our current program, looking at best practice in uh, not just in the area districts, but also in the county and in the uh, state and in the country, what's happening in, in best practice in their content areas. And it resulted in a very detailed report and analysis of the strengths 
and some areas for opportunity for Will Township Public Schools to raise our levels of excellence in education, instruction, and activity. Um, I'd like to thank um, the Program Evaluation Committee members who many are here tonight, and they did the hard work. They met anywhere from four to six full days through the school year, um, collaborating with each other, meeting with vendors to look at resources, site visits, leaving early in the morning to visit other districts, and a lot of work because it meant something to them. And I, again, want to thank all the members of the Program Evaluation Committees. I'd like to start with the Science Program Evaluation Committee members. Um, when I call your name, if you'd please stand and be recognized and continue standing until the whole committee has been called. Eleni Abiel, Melissa Bramley, Andrea Devine, Jennifer Greener, Michelle Hozako, Jamie Iamselli, Erin Kramer, Jacqueline Latin, Megan Lozano, Carrie Maloney, Margaret McChesney, Kristen Morano, Jennifer Patterson, Joshua Raposo, Caitlin Schock, Christine Shanklin, Dina Tango, Joshua Tennant, and Jill Turner. Thank you very much. We give them a round of applause. I also want to just mention that we had two high school science content specialists volunteer to work with our elementary teachers because they really wanted to make sure that the transition from elementary, especially with the shifts in the science standards, that the transitions from elementary through middle school to high school were really looked at deeply and we appreciated your time, um, Jen and Josh. At Health and Phys Ed, K-5, we have uh, a small committee and they worked again four or five times throughout the school year full days working really hard at looking at the health phys ed program at elementary that's james cowley if you could please stand joe fisco chris knight gary lindstra jeremy Marritt, mike mcgowan john pagano jennifer salt and laura wall thank you very much Our math program evaluation committee. Where are you? Christy Butler. This is grades 6 through 12. Julie Cranston. Jean DeLucio. Mariah Doyle. Amanda Glynn. Ryan Kalinowski. Mark Kelly. Susan Panasek. Kelsey Plaskin. And Bianca Venice. Congratulations and thank you. I also need to acknowledge the hard work of the supervisors who led these committees. Um, the supervisors really organized the work of the committees. They helped uh, compose and compile the summary reports that were presented to the Curriculum and Instruction Committee and really made sure that the process was well developed, timely, helping get sub coverage for teachers and making sure that the process went along smoothly. So if I could please acknowledge on the Science Program Evaluation Committee, Mrs. Kathleen Brenner, Dr. Rachel Lella, Kelly Bond, Mrs. Kelly Bond, where are you? Please stand, stand up, come on. Thank you. And our Health Phys Ed uh, Committee Chair, Mr. Tom Redu. Our Math Program Evaluation Committee was Mr. Matt Kukoda, Mrs. Laura Kerman, and Dr. Nancy Samaha, who couldn't be with us tonight. She wasn't feeling well. Thank you. I probably should have put up the slide so you could have seen your names. I'm sorry, I got carried away. So the purpose of program evaluation is to really take a look at the five-year cycle of curriculum. And when we're truly in a program evaluation cycle, we look at the first year as an evaluation year every five years. And we, we go through this evaluation process to make sure that the curriculum in a content area is really analyzed in a systematic way. When we do this, even though it's a tremendous amount of work, it ensures that the curriculum never gets stale, that we're not looking at outdated resources, that technology, which changes so frequently, is kept updated, and we're looking at what are best practices going on 
nationally, internationally, that we can look at higher performing districts and make sure that where we can replicate those practices, we can do that. The second and third year, we look at piloting programs that we looked at in the evaluation process, potentially implementing those programs. And then the last two years in the five-year cycle, we're monitoring the new curriculum and we're gathering student achievement data to see if it had the desired impact. We look at in every program evaluation, we look at these areas of focus. As I said, we look at research and best practice. We do a historical review of what's gone on in Wall Township schools in that particular content area. We then look at what we're currently doing in that program. And then we start looking at comparison data. If there's student achievement data, we look at that. We look at programs and resources. And then we start to develop um, commendations, things that the district is doing well. And there were many commendations in these areas. And then we start to look at recommendations or opportunities that we have to grow the program and raise levels of student achievement. And then those are ultimately formed into SMART goals. And the SMART goals are five-year SMART goals that we look at um, ways that we can improve the program. And each year, I'll go over how we did against the program goals and what we still need to look at um, accomplishing. So I'm going to turn it over. Some of our supervisors are going to co-present a few slides, and then I am going to present the SMART goals in each content area. So if I could have um, our K-5 science supervisors. That's okay. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, so we started looking at what uh, research shows is the best way for our students to learn. Um, and science is one of the best ways for us to really be able to get the kids involved and get their hands on learning as opposed to teachers imparting knowledge, kind of opening up the brain of students, pouring the knowledge in, and us hoping that the students retain it. Um, so when looking at uh, project and problem-based learning, these are um, the programs that we looked at. We wanted the uh, science curriculum to be presented in a way where the students were looking at problems, not simply just vocabulary words and things of that nature, where they're looking at problems, coming up with solutions, um, inquiry-based types of um, Learning, learning those types of skills. Um, in the problem um, and project-based learning, students also get the opportunity to work collaboratively with each other, which was something that we feel is really important for students to learn how to communicate with one another, how to share ideas respectfully, um, agree, disagree, state their beliefs um, um, you know, with purpose. Um, so those were two of the uh, learning strategies that we really looked for when we were looking for a new science program. Additionally, one of the themes that came out through our research frequently was that the work that our students are doing needs to prepare them for the real life jobs that they're going to have once they leave our schools. And interestingly, a lot of the research was telling us that the jobs that we are preparing them for don't currently exist in our, in our world as it stands. So we're preparing them for sort of the unknown. And one of the best ways that we can do that for them is to promote their learning through critical thinking to make them problem solvers, to have them learn how to ask questions and try to find the answers to those questions and to be interested learners when it comes to science. Obviously, we want them to also have a strong foundation at the elementary level when it comes to science um, as far as foundational skills and background knowledge in the sciences and the various sciences. Um, but really to create them as learners and thinkers who are collaborating with their peers, who are debating back and forth, who are interested in what they're learning and are able to critically think and think about their thinking um, in a way that moves their own learning forward so that the teacher is not leading the conversations. It's really coming from the students and they're driving their own learning in that way. So once we go through the research process where we look at best practices in science, we're looking at the new standards in science, then we started to look at what programs were out there and who was using different programs. So these are the five districts that we kind of zeroed in on. We zeroed in on them for a number of reasons. Number one, they had programs that we wanted to look at. They're high, most of them are high performing districts and they're very similar to us in um, makeup. So the, the ones 
ones that we actually finally went to was Cranberry, Matawan, and Howell, looking at Inspire Science, uh, Discovery Education Tech Book, and Mystery Science. And the committee decided that we would choose Mystery Science for our program K-5. to So after an extensive report, these are the SMART goals associated with the K-5 science program evaluation. And again, these are five-year program, uh, five-year SMART goals, so we hope to accomplish these by June of 2024. The first is the revision of the current science curriculum to include um, enhanced instructional strategies that are better aligned with the rigor of the New Jersey Student Learning Standards in Science. And you can see that there are six actionable objectives to reach that goal, uh, developing an action plan for the tra tra for the transition excuse me to mystery science as mrs brenner um stated newzella which is an informational text resource that the teachers can use not just for science but also for social studies and for ela and then the acquisition of tower gardens um, for the elementary schools there will be curriculum writing in teams rather than individually so that the teachers can work in collaboration the acquisition of the new resources identified professional development really looking at the k-5 science period or block and making sure that we structure that block so that we have um, very specific instructional expectations for teachers during that time and then we're also looking at some of the co-curricular and extracurricular activities that will help expand students scientific knowledge one of which is the steam tank maker fest and i know you know we just did that at the uh, intermediate school last week we had um, 120 students I believe from eight different districts participating and developing innovative solutions to global problems and it was amazing some of the uh, inventions and solutions students came up with the second SMART goal for K-5 Science addresses technology and making sure that students and teachers have access to technology. And as I mentioned, that's ever-changing, so we have to look at this goal each year and again, see what's out there and what's innovative. But we need to survey teachers to identify their specific professional development needs, specific to instructional technology, and really looking at personalized learning so that students are interested and engaged and there's a lot of choice. We need to inventory our current instructional technology, the subscriptions and licenses, and making sure that we have equity of instructional tech across all of our schools. The fourth, uh, the fourth uh, objective ad addresses professional development, again, specific to technology and personalized learning. And then analyzing and re revising the curriculum to make sure that we have those opportunities for personalized learning, which is very important. The third SMART goal, you're gonna see this in all of the content areas that we did program evaluation. This is a really important SMART goal because it puts the a large bulk of professional development in the hands of teachers here in the district that have the talent, that have the aptitude, and they have the desire um, to teach their colleagues. And they've won the respect and the trust of their colleagues, so who better than our own internal talent to turn key professional development. So we're looking across all content areas to make sure that we are working towards developing a teacher leadership academy, we're up identifying teachers with high levels of efficacy in science, providing opportunities for this, this teacher leadership cadre to really participate in extra professional development that enhances their own leadership ability, and then time to work with their colleagues. So those are the three SMART goals for K-5 science. At this time, I'd like to bring up Mr. Redu and Mr. Pagano, who will go through a, a, just a brief background of the health phys ed program evaluation. Thank you. Um, so the, the focus for, for phys ed was to, to really look historically back at what has been done in the past and how we tried to change it. So we've moved away from sport specific activities to um, more fine gross motor and cooperative game things for our elementary PE students. Uh, the big thing is to get them to exercise more frequently and to enjoy what they are doing. Um, you know, biggest challenge for any adult is finding time to exercise. And if we teach the students that exercise is part of their day, they don't have to find time to do it. They're, they're just in the habit of always doing that. So th the focus has really shifted to that. And it's, it's kind of across all grade levels, but, you know, especially at the elementary school level. Yeah. 
Uh, so the, the other thing that, that we looked at was uh, state requirements. It's uh, 150 minutes of health and physical education. We're very fortunate in our district, uh, probably one of the few in the state that we um, already have 120 minutes of active physical education time. And to meet the requirements, um, which also fall with their health lessons, we have some ca character education lessons. Um, we've also incorporated some science lessons in their classrooms, as, w as well as uh, breakout breaks during ELA and math to kind of get the extra minutes of time. Um, and we're really in a, a very good spot as compared to many other districts that we've, we've been in contact with. So here's uh, what the research says that should be happening in K-5 health and physical education. There should be planned sequential standard-based physical education curriculum designed to develop motor skills, knowledge, and behaviors for active living. There should be a comprehensive health curriculum that builds students' knowledge, skills, and positive attitudes about health. And uh, social-emotional learning is another area that we really focused in on, and uh, the need to infuse that into daily physical education and health lessons to enhance uh, students' abilities to deal effectively with ethical and daily challenges. We looked at the uh, five core elements of social and emotional learning, and really feel the need to make sure that that's part of our health and phys ed curriculum. Uh, we also saw that health standards should address mental illness as well as suicide prevention. And as you will see uh, regarding the Lifelines program in the upcoming slides by Dr. Gleason, uh, I really strongly believe we're clearly on the right track with K-5 health and PE instruction and our SMART goal should get us there. Thank you, Mr. Redo, Mr. Piano. Smart goal number one for K-5 Health Phys Ed, uh, again, addresses improving the curriculum to include enhanced instructional strategies aligned with the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. You'll see there are eight actual ob objectives. Uh, one is the integration of the Lifeline Suicide Prevention Program to be integrated in grade five curriculum, uh, purchasing updated digital teacher subscriptions for health curriculum, the teacher uh, resources were, were fairly outdated, so the uh, vendor now has a digital subscription, which the health and phys ed teachers were really excited about. We're looking at curriculum writing in a team collaborative model to re rewrite the overall health and phys ed curriculum, purchasing supplemental materials to support social emotional learning, which as Mr. Redu said is a very, very important part of all instruction and learning, not just in health and phys ed. We look at facilitate identifying and facilitating professional development for our teachers and looking for ex opportunities for extracurricular activities aligned with health and phys ed we'll continue to make sure that we're maximizing that 150 minute plus requirement with health and phys ed and then also looking at the cost and feasibility of a teacher remote control for all iPads while students are using iPads for health uh, and phys ed curriculum SMART goal number two looks at improving the classroom learning environment to optimize learning for all students. There are five items within this, this SMART goal. The first is researching the cost and feasibility of a gymnasium partition screen at Allenwood Elementary School. We have one in at least one other school. Uh, looking at the cost and feasibility of ceiling mounted LCD projectors. We would want those caged in to protect them from activities, but this would allow our health and phys ed teachers to really use the digital subscriptions that they're, we're purchasing for health, um, as well as other resources that relate to phys ed that they could use a digital uh, platform. The third is looking at, as we mentioned before, the cost and feasibility of a teacher controlled remote control for all of the iPads. We'll want to look at purchasing and installing safety wall mats at Al Allenwood and West Belmar. And then looking at the cost and feasibility of outdoor storage sheds at the elementary schools for the addition of new resources. The third goal, I won't repeat, but it's that same teacher leadership goal. We're looking at that goal in all content areas, including health and phys ed. This time I'd like to bring up Mr. Matt Kokoda and Mrs. Laura Kerman for grade six to 12 math. There you go. 
So, <clears throat> um, so when we worked on the committee, the uh, teachers that we had on the committee were fantastic and they were really dedicated to the process. So it was easy to allow them to take what they were passionate about and run with it. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, what you see on the slide here about the mathematical literacy. When we looked at you know, the, what the research says to have that common language that we can use throughout all their math courses making meaning and active in social learning environments. You know, it's not the same as when maybe some of us were in school, when I was in school, and you know, we sit in rows and we do math and we practice and we, you know, it's a little bit different now where we have to collaborate, like they were talking about the science as well. It's time to collaborate and like have them work together and you'll see in some of the SMART goals, you know, some ideas to change what our classrooms look like at the high school and at the middle school. And then um, differentiated instruction and learning, that leads into something that we have been working on all year called RTI, response to intervention, that we're gonna continue with, that the research says that we do have to, we have different learners in the classroom, we have to meet their needs. And then also the growth mindset to, you know, to be able to work with the kids and to get them to grow and understand you know, what they're doing. So we did a lot of our focus on the Algebra One, Geometry, Algebra Two, and beyond because the middle school had just recently adopted a new program. So while we looked at that data, we did a lot of focus on um, the upper level courses. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mrs. Carmen. All right, so uh, another aspect of the math program, program evaluation was to take a look at similar districts and high performing districts and compare them to what it is that we're, we're doing here in Wall Township. Uh, and our criteria that we used were this uh, total student population, uh, percentage of students enrolled in special ed programs, uh, percentage of students who are economically disadvantaged, percentage of English language learners, and average percent of uh, <coughs> park scores met or exceeding expectations. From there, uh, we identified f five districts that uh, were ones that we were interested in kind of to take a look at some of the things that they, they were areas in which they were doing well. Uh, we identified Madawan Aberdeen and Hopewell Valley. We went on site visits and we, we were, from there we had the opportunity to visit with teachers, supervisors and principals and visit uh, cl classrooms and see how they utilize their resources uh, to the best of their ability. Uh, from there, uh, we were able to decide on uh, we, uh, going through a pilot of three different math, pro math programs uh, to, in, uh, to infuse in our algebra and geometry at the intermediate school and our algebra and geometry at the, at the high, school, high school level as well. Um, and then through, through that, um, you know, want to make sure that we, we're highlighting that um, we're actually 28% over the state average on our, our math scores, grades 6 through 11, and in particular geometry at the uh, intermediate school level was 87% uh, passing and algebra was 97%. So, you know, although they were, they were two areas in which, which we excelled upon, uh, in, it, in uh, we obviously want to look how we can improve that. Thank you. The first SMART goal for grade 6 to 12 math addresses professional development. Uh, to ensure funding conditions and structures to enhance their instructional practices and there are four objectives to attain that goal surveying the 6 to 12 math teachers to assess their professional learning needs specific to their courses to student learning in those courses and the resources looking at focused areas for professional learning and developing a professional development schedule for articulation between wall intermediate school and wall high school and really looking at um, vertical heart articulation and not just um, horizontal articulation we're also looking to explore opportunities for greater common planning time at wall high school Wall intermediate school has a very favorable schedule that allows for daily common planning time and so we'll continue to look it's dif more difficult at the high school to do that but we'll continue to look for ways to increase opportunities for teachers to collaborate SMART Goal 2 looks at the math curriculum, and as Mr. Kokoda said, we're piloting selected textbooks in Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. Um, we're, I guess we're doing that twice. Uh, sorry about that. We're researching and identifying digital formative assessment and benchmarking systems for those same courses. We're analyzing the midterms and finals at Wall High School to make sure that we're fully aligned to the rigor of the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment and the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. In Wall High School faculty advisory, discussions uh, there'll still there'll be continued discussion of a uh, variety of topics included grading categories to ensure grades are appropriately reflective of the mastery of standards and then looking at aligning summer curriculum writing with the five-year curriculum plan 
uh, there are a few more goals, uh, a few more objectives in this goal. We're looking at developing curriculum for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade personal financial literacy. We've always infused those required standards, uh, 9 1 and 9 2, within the curriculum, but the state has required a really sort of an enhanced look at what are we doing for personal financial literacy and making sure that students really understand the concept of money and value and budgeting before they get to high school. So we'll have teachers working on on a, a dedicated curriculum, a, a specific unit within the math curriculum. We're also looking at revising curriculum to include additional prerequisite concepts in Algebra 1 CP, which is a seven and a half credit course, revising trigonometry and analytic, analytic geometry to add the depth of focus on an algebraic skills, and we're always continuing to review our offering of levels of math courses and looking at opportunities at the high school to maximize math instructional time, including methods for SAT and ACT prep. The third SMART goal is to improve the physical classroom learning environments to maximize student learning. And we know that when students feel comfortable in class, um, they have a better opportunity to feel more engaged. And so we're looking at exploring flexible seating options that support small group instruction and improve student engagement at both intermediate school and the high school. We'd like to identify pilot classrooms at both the intermediate school and the high school for these flexible seating arrangements and and, um, you know sort of assess the impact of these furniture and classroom environment arrangements um, and then we'll be looking at analyzing student achievement data in the pilot classrooms and develop a five-year plan for increased flexible seating arrangements in the classrooms SMART Goal 4 looks at response to intervention, which Mrs. Kerman mentioned. Uh, we've talked to, at, I think, several meetings about our new RTI model, which we're really proud of. Our uh, entire staff, faculty, administration have put so much support behind developing a model of meeting the needs of all students and catching those students who are at risk of learning deficits, um, academic, social, emotional, catching them early and providing supports for all students. So we'll continue to make sure that we're developing our district RTI model, increasing tier one interventions in the classroom, analyzing um, the schedule at intermediate school to potentially restructure a position to serve as a part-time math interventionist. Um, by June of 2020, looking at the potential for restructuring the current schedule to add a full-time interventionist or coach at intermediate school and exploring opportunities at Wall High School to potentially include a math interventionist to serve tier two students, which are the next level of need in RTI. And then the last goal is the goal you've seen with the other content areas where we're going to have dedicated time to develop a teacher leadership academy, identifying teachers with high levels of efficacy in mathematics. So in conclusion, um, what we would like to do annually is to present to the board where we are in year one after each program evaluation. Uh, this summer I will be doing sort of, you know, the year in review on ELA, which we did our ELA program eva evaluation last year, and each summer give you a year update of the goals uh, and the objectives, that those that we've accomplished and what we still have ahead of us. We want to make sure that when we're working on budget development that our budget development is aligned with the SMART goals and that we're looking at student achievement data to make sure that um, the desired effect is being reached. If we're putting this effort, money, time into uh, all of these SMART goals, we want to make sure that students are really getting the impact of the work. And then we'll make revisions to SMART goals where appropriate. So again, I'd just like to thank, again, back to the teachers for all of your hard work. This is just a highlight of the 40 to 57 page reports that are on the website. You can find all of the program evaluation reports and presentations on the website. Um, and it was a tremendous amount of work. I'm really excited. I think we're all excited about um, the work that we have ahead of us. And we know that it'll ultimately benefit, most importantly, the students. So if we could just give another round of applause to all of our teachers who participated on the Program Evaluation Committee. And I'd like to also thank our building administration for supporting all of the teachers being out of the classroom for all that time and also giving some feedback to us as we work through the Program Evaluation, so thank you.
Okay. Um, I want to thank Dr. Gleason for the presentation and to reiterate her thanks to all of the teachers and administrators who dedicated um, their time and energy to these endeavors. We very much appreciate it. At this time and per district policy, um, we will open the floor for public comment regarding Dr. Gleason's presentation. Um, and this is dictated by policy 0167. So if anybody has any comments on the program evaluation highlights, uh, feel free to take the mic down here or upstairs okay seeing none we will close uh, public comment at this time and move on to our last student representatives report from you guys good evening mrs. Connolly superintendent Dyer and members of the Board of Education uh, I'd like to thank the board mrs. Sergio and the teachers for giving me this opportunity to represent the student body throughout the 2018-19 school year uh, it's been a pleasure to report the monthly activities and events of, Wall, of the Wall High School student body. Uh, being able to show the board and the public about our student interests and achievements was something I looked forward to doing every month. Uh, school is more than just what goes on in the classroom. As we report it on the, uh, theatrical accolades, athletic achievements, and eye-opening field trips. Uh, we have so many outstanding and passionate kids in our school. Uh, whenever I would reach out to students about uh, their clubs and athletics, they would gladly talk about whatever was going on. And being a representative for the student body made me proud to be a member of this community. Uh, additionally, I've learned important lessons during my time here. I've learned how to network, I've practiced my writing skills, public speaking skills, and got to witness how public education works behind the scenes. And I'd like to thank, uh, I'd like to end with a final thank you. And I'm excited for my next four years in college, but I'll never forget Wall. And uh, best of luck to you all, and best of luck to next year's representatives. I would like to take this time uh, at my last Board of Ed meeting to sincerely thank you, Mrs. Connolly, Superintendent Dyer, and members of the Board of Education uh, for the opportunity to serve as a student representative. It was a great honor to be chosen and an even greater privilege to share the accomplishments and news of my fellow classmates each month. This position has taught me much about asking questions, formulating opinions, and presenting to an audience. I learned to speak with confidence and become more involved in the school and community by reaching out to those with different interests, such as band, theater, sports, and academics. I am so grateful for this learning experience and the opportunity to be able to reach out to this passionate student body. This is an amazing community and school district and has treated me well the past 12 years. I would like to thank the administrators, teachers, and staff who all took part in shaping me into the person I am today and allowing me to speak on their behalf. A special thanks as well to Dave for always being there to write and present with me each month. Thank you once again for making this year as the Board of Education student representative so wonderful. I hope that everyone has a great summer and I wish you the best of luck with the next school year. I know that Riley and Montana, the student reps for the next year, will uphold this position with pride. Um, Dave and Molly, on behalf of the board, Mrs. Connolly has certificates of appreciation for you. And we also recognized you at the senior um, awards night. And on top of the certificate, you get to take your nameplate with you. <laughs> Just the name itself, not the medal holder. Um, but that might, you know, that might serve you well. You can, you know, hang it around your neck, put it in your dorm room, um, so everyone knows who you are. Um, we really appreciate all that you did as student representatives, and as I said, you have raised the bar for those who will come after you, and you did a great job, and, and we really did look forward to your reports every month, so thank you. There's not much I can add to that, but on, on behalf of the Board of Education, thank you uh, for adding color to the dais every month, for keeping us in touch with what's going on with the students, and we wish you the very best of everything in college and in all of your future endeavors, so thank you.
Um, I don't know if you guys want to get going, if you want to stick around because some of your friends are here. Um, they're about to get re uh, recognized. But um, next item on the agenda is the president's report. Um, but I'm going to skip that this week so that we can move on to the superintendent's updates so we can get to the student and staff recognition, which is why we're all here and probably the most important part of tonight's meeting. It is. Um, I look forward to the June meeting because it is always a chance to recognize some of our staff members as well as our students. Um, this year we have several retirees, but it's my only understanding that only, a two, only two could be present this evening. So um, is Helena with us, Helena Coogan? Right, the rain might have kept her away. Um, but I know that I saw Linda Redman. So Linda, would you please stand? <laughs> Linda Redman served as a lunch and resource, recess paraprofessional for many years. She was always cheerful and loved spending time with the students. While we will no longer see her at Allenwood School, we know that we can always find her at Manasquan Beach. <laughs> Congratulations, Linda, and thank you very much. I might interject for a second. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Redmond was there and helped me out quite a bit when I was in first grade. And uh, when I came in, she ran up to me and she said, do you know who I am? And I said, oh, she said, Mrs. Redmond. And I immediately just wanted to give her a hug. And she's such a lovely, lovely person. And um, we'll, we will miss you so much. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And just just to one up Chris a little bit since I'm a little older. <laughs> Um, many years ago when, when I was uh, uh, new to the district, I started in Allenwood School in fifth grade, and she was there, and she was always so sweet, uh, still sweet today. Uh, the district is certainly losing somebody great, and thank you for all your hard work here. We appreciate it. Thank you. At this time, we have several students to recognize, so I'm going to ask Mr. Radu to get us started with um, recognition of some of our athletic teams. All right, thank you, Ms. Mrs. Dyer, Mrs. Connolly, and members of the Board of Education for having us here tonight and for your support of our athletic programs. It was a very successful spring season for Wall High School as we had one athlete take home an assortment of short conference and state titles, as well as two of our teams who earned titles at the sectional and state level. The first of these teams that we will recognize this evening is boys golf. To, to tell us more about their championship season is head coach Matt Stefanski. Coach Stefanski has become a regular at these Board of Education recognitions, having now won three sectional state titles in the past five years. He has also led his team to a remarkable eight straight tournament of champion appearances and he hit a major personal coaching milestone when he got his 300th career victory this season. One other very telling statistic about Coach Stefanski and the boys golf team, their incredible success is that they have either won the division or have been co-champs of the division in 15 out of the 16 seasons that Coach Stefanski has coached them. Please welcome Coach Matt Stefanski. I just don't coach Schmidt, I'll be very quick, and Abby as well. Um, thank you, Su Superintendent Dyer, President Connolly, and the remaining members of the Board of Education uh, for this evening's invitation. The boys and I know it's a great year when we're invited to come to the Board of Ed meeting, and this certainly was. Um, I just want to, um, and before I encapsulate what's going on with the season and how we did, I just want to thank Judy White, Mike Dimmon, and Transportation, our secretaries, Barbara Renato, Tammy Ber Berardo, Eileen Brown, and obviously um, Ms. Sergio, because she allows us to go to every tournament along with Mr. Radu, and uh, the boys and I really appreciate it. And one further thing, um, I just want to give a little acknowledgement to our bus driver, um, Bob Haig. 
he is our uh, good luck charm. We've won uh, four state titles in the last eight years, and Bob was always our driver, and he always made it a precedent. And to my understanding is he's retiring this year. And the boys uh, included him in our championship photo this year, and I thought it was very special because Bob was there. So I, I would like to give a round of applause for Bob Hayden. As I said, I'm going to be brief, so I'm going to go right to the boys and introduce them. But uh, just real quick with the season, we went 16-4. and four. Um, It started out very cold with the polar vortex coming in in early March. So our first practices uh, were in snow and uh, freezing rain. Um, but the boys did well. They, they never complained. And as the season progressed, come May 13th, they performed. And... Uh, I mean, we, we beat Rumson by 18, and in the beginning of the year tournament, we lost them by 41. So progression happened. Unfortunately, Rumson got us back at the Tournament of Champions, but I think uh, it'll be our turn since most of the boys, 80% of them, are coming back next year. So um, now I'm going to introduce uh, the recipients of tonight's certificates from, uh, to be recognized. Daniel Byer. Shane Darby, Alex D. Simone, Benny Haggerty, Patrick Lacey, Tyler's doing double duty for ROTC, so Tyler Miller Gorsey. Liam Neufer, <laughs> Nate Real, <laughs> Liam Stamitsky. <laughs> and I just want to give a, a little bit of attention for Ryan Walsh. Um, he'll be attending Georgia Tech next year. He's homesick. And um, I, I really wanted to say something special about him because he's a second year player in our program, never played golf before his junior year. And he had a goal to break 90. And if anybody out there plays golf, uh, breaking 90 is one thing when you're playing a Monmouth County course. But when you're playing in a state tournament uh, for us to go and uh, further into the t tournament of champions, that's a great feat. And Ryan did that. And uh, I just want to applaud him for that. <laughs> okay. Wait till all, all the athletes are done. Right. Yep. Yeah. When all the sports are done. All right. Abby Nonnenberg became one of the most decorated track athletes in Wall High School history this season. The culmination of this record-breaking season came on June 9th when Abby became the first female from Wall High School to take home gold in an event at the NJSIA Meet of Champions since 1976. To tell us more about the historic track season, please welcome one of the architects of what is starting to become a revival period in wall track, our head girls track coach, Jen Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Redu. Good evening. It's an honor to stand here tonight and speak to you about the accomplishments of Abby. Um, Abby Nonnenberg is a junior. This past season, she capped off her perfect season. She remained undefeated in New Jersey and was the top New Jersey finisher at the prestigious Penn Relays. Abby has worked extremely hard this season. The focus and determination she has shown is like no other. She is hardworking and humble. Abby puts in extra hours of training after practice and on the weekends. She strives to be the best and has the determination to keep improving. During the 2019 season, Abby was the B North Divisional Champion, Monmouth County Champion, Shore Conference Champion, Central Jersey Group 2 State Sectional Champion, New Jersey Group 2 State Champion, and the overall New Jersey Meet of Champion winner in the discus. 
Abby capped off her season in New Jersey as the number one thrower in the discus. At this meet, she threw a new personal record of 143 feet and 10 inches, which also improved her current school record. She is the first Meet of Champions winner from Wall High School in 43 years. Abby also qualified for the New Balance Nationals in North Carolina this past weekend. She finished 22nd at Nationals. This was four places higher than her projected seed. This season alone, she has made her mark as one of the most decorated athletes at Wall High School. Abby has also earned first team all shore honors, first team all state honors. She was a finalist for the Asbury Park Press Thrower of the Year, and she will be honored this Sunday as the Shore Track Coaches Association Athlete of the Year. Abby continues to make a name for wall track and field with all of her athletic accomplishments. We are very proud of her. Congratulations, Abby. Another coach that has taken his program to new heights this season is head coach Todd Schmidt. Todd became just the fifth coach in Wall High School history to lead his team to multiple group championships when the 2019 team joined Todd's 2004 team on this prestigious group champions list. Coach Schmidt also hit a personal coaching milestone when he got win number 400 this season, putting him at the number six on the all-time Shore Conference wins list. Coach Schmidt will be telling us more about his 2019 team and their amazing accomplishments. Good evening, everyone, and um, Superintendent Dyer, um, Board of Education members, members of the community, and friends and family of World Baseball. First of all, congratulations to Coach Stefanski and the boys. Another fantastic season. Uh, to Abby and the track team, again, congratulations for a fantastic reading about that on a weekly event. You know. Um, First of all, and before we get started, I just want to thank Tom Redu and his secretary, Barbara Renato, um, not just for baseball, but for all sports. Um, behind the scene, really, no one sees the stuff that gets done by them. Um, and the spring season may be the worst of the year with weather, um, proms, class trips, all the things we deal, have to deal with, but they never blink, and they always uh, find a way to make things work out. Um, next, Bob Romano of the, of the maintenance department. Um, they do, the, they do the work on our field on a daily basis. Um, they installed a new batting cage this year, which became kind of a part of our routine uh, before all of our big games. And as coaches, we really believe it's a big part of our success. Um, I'll reiterate the point about wall transportation that Coach Stefanski talked about. Um, they get us, you know, we're, we practice off site. So they get us to practice daily and on the road to our games on time and done with safety. A special shout out to our own personal. Uh, there's something about bus drivers and good luck. I know. Um, some of you may remember Mr. Quackenbush. I think he was the only guy that had ever been to like every Wall Baseball State Championship game up through 2004. Um, but this year we had our we had our lucky charm, lucky charm, which was um, Conrad Lauderette. Uh, he was uh, he's a, he's a baseball guy, and he made sure that his wife uh, washed his lucky shirt before all of our state games, and also was part of our team photo when we got back to the school, which we had a great parade uh, brought forth by the Wall Fire Department, Police Department, and EMTs. Um, so it's something a memory from our state finals that will go forward. Um, and then lastly, oh, lastly, our cafeteria ladies on Fridays. They would walk out the door with a, with a cardboard box with all the food that was not going to be used over the weekend, and our guys got a chance to munch down. We you know, would have lunch at 10, 15 in the morning, and some nights we weren't getting back to school until... Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, Brian. <laughs> uh, we don't get back to school some nights until 8 o'clock. You know, so 10, 15, lunch makes for a long day, but they were always very grateful with that. Um, so... 
this is the uh, part of talk about the baseball team. Um, for, just thankful. I want to also thank my assistant coaches, uh, Coach Rochford, Coach Semino, and Coach Seminaro. Well, we'll have them up here in a minute. But uh, as most of you know, I had a little uh, mishap with a scooter in the gym here back in October. Um, and uh, it was really it wasn't until the middle of March that I would know that I was going to come back and teach, and let alone coach. But uh, Coach Rochford took charge with the rest of the coaches, and we really went on without missing a beat. But what a fantastic season it was uh, for Walt, one of the best in Walt baseball history. Um, very good group of uh, young men, a core group of seniors who uh, played for us as sophomores and juniors. Um, they finished the baseball program over the last three years with a record of 68 and 17. Um, and the baseball part is, is of the story is just that. They're young men, boys, playing a game that they love with their friends, and they let nothing get between them and their goals. And, and baseball is one of those sports where you face up and downs uh, on a daily, inning by inning, game to game, and that's throughout the season. And we had those. Even though we were a state championship team, we had times where we had adversity. But that's what baseball provides. Baseball is, is a colorful view of life, of how sometimes we get down, but we have to battle back through it. Um, Throughout the season, the one, stood, one thing that stood above, we had some talented baseball players, obviously, but the one thing that stood above all that was the fact that they were great teammates to each other. Yes, we had, we had talented players, but I'm sure they would be the first ones to tell you that it takes everybody to make a team and to win a championship. You know, we wouldn't have, hung that, we wouldn't have been able to hung that banner without our starting players, our role players, guys that came off of the bench. Um, it was a totally, a, totally a team effort. Um, they are teammates. I guess check that. They're actually championship teammates. They will carry forward for the rest of their lives and be members of the community, such as Chris Sanflippo, a graduate of the Wall Baseball Program. Uh, we won 17 of our last 18 games, winning 14 in a row, tying a school record for consecutive wins. We were seated fourth in the very competitive Central Jersey Group 3, uh, group three bracket, where we defeated Lawrence Township, Colts Neck, the number one seed, Hamilton West, and then Northern Burlington at home for the sectional final championship. On to the state Semifinals, we faced number 17, Cherry Hill West, in the state semis, where we won 4-3, to three, before defeating number 12, West Morris, in the state finals by a score of 10-2. to two. It was a great pleasure to be called their coach, and for no other reason, they are a great group of young men who will carry on to be successful members of the community and represent not only Wall Baseball, Wall High School, and the district in the community very well. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you our coaches and our players. Uh, Mr. Jim Rochford. Mike, Mike Seminaro, Neil Semino, and I just, I just I almost forgot, I just got this message about when I got here tonight that on top of all of our championships, um, we, proved, uh, we proved one of those adages wrong that we were voted the uh, sportsmanship team for Monmouth County by the Umpires Association, so nice guys don't always finish last. <laughs> I'd like to introduce our players that are here tonight. Sophomore Jay Bant. <laughs> Junior Sean Brannan. <laughs> Junior Matt Croson. <laughs> Junior Alfredo DePola. <laughs> Junior Sean, Sean Nucera. And these are our seniors, and I'm going to add as to our seniors, I'm going to add where they are going to college because it's a pretty impressive list. We have our senior, Trey Dombrowski, Monmouth University. <laughs> Even though we're not talking about individual accolades tonight, we have to do tell you that Trey was, uh, it will be probably announced tomorrow or, uh, or, or Thursday, Trey is the New Jersey State Pitcher of the Year. Senior David Howard, Northeastern University. <laughs> Ryan Napolitano, Lafayette College. <laughs> Dylan Ritchie, College of New Jersey. <laughs> Grant Shulman, Rutgers University. <laughs> Johnny Volpe, Ryder University. Doug Wetzel, Brookdale. We have three seniors who cannot be here tonight. John Arati, or Sinus College. Drew Tidwell, Purdue University. And Tyler Winkowski, Rutgers University. 
Again, I'd like to thank uh, the Board of Education, administration, for uh, giving all the support for this state championship baseball team. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. We have one um, more student group to recognize. If I could ask Mr. Frank Harrison to come forward. Mr. Harrison is our <laughs> NNDCC and Service and Leadership Academy um, teacher. And he has some very special students to introduce to us as well this evening. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Connolly, Ms. Dyer, and the board uh, for having us. Uh, it's been a mon uh, monumental year with uh, students joining the military. It's kind of a first in, uh, I guess, Wall's history that this many students at once uh, have enlisted in uh, serving the United States. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, the first person is uh, Zach Andreen. Uh, Zach, as you already know, uh, went through boot camp while in high school as a junior. Uh, that is a first for Wall High School. Uh, it's not common for most kids to go through boot camp while in high school uh, with 20, 30-year-old men uh, in his platoon and group. Uh, and he's accomplished that. And this fall, he uh, will be going through his rest of his training. Uh, if you notice, he's also wearing a different uniform than the rest because he's actually he's the full deal um, the next person I'd like to recognize which will be going through boot camp this uh, summer uh, and it's actually started rolling ball so it was him uh, Zach Andreen then it was uh, Theo McGowan Theo. and then that turned into the next person uh, Tyler Lokerson Frank Penna. There's one other person that's uh, not here this evening, Mike Roca. He uh, cannot make it. And then Jacob Byrne. So what happened was this gentleman here got this one, and this one got this one, and then this one got this one, uh, and it continued. <laughs> and then, oh, 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 there's one, there's more, there's more. Uh, and then we have our Marine, which uh, is Megan Maurer. And then we have uh, Nicholas Rotunda, who will be going to Penn State University, and then he will be a, uh, enlisted as an ensign on active duty after graduation. Uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen of the NNDCC, Mr. Harrison, I just want to say it has been a pleasure over the past four years having you be a part of our board meetings uh, with the presentation of the colors, uh, being present at the um, change of command, uh, our first ever military signing day this, this past um, year, a couple of weeks ago, and um, you, you represent Wall Township very well, and we look forward to hearing great things about you, and thank you for your service to our country. Thank you. Before you sit down, I just want to add to that very quickly. One of the things that I have gotten to watch over my tenure on this board is the growth of this program. And that's largely a testament to the students who are part of it and the teacher who is guiding it. And I just want to say thank you to you guys and congratulations on growing a fabulous program. At this time, we're going to just take a, a few minutes recess, so if there are members of the audience who were not planning on staying for the rest of the meeting, this would be your time. Um, and there might even be some cookies left on your way out, but thank you very much. to the superintendent's CUSAC placement results at this time. Thank you. The only other update that I have for this evening um, is that we received our placement results from the Department of Education with regard to CUSAC monitoring. And as per the attachment, our scores were as follows. In instruction and program, we had 87%. In fiscal management, 100%. Governance, 100%, operations, 94%, and in personnel, 98%.
I did want to point out that in instruction and program, we were only eligible to get a score of 87 percent because 60 points of the total 100 come directly from our student achievement results on the park. The other 40 points were more under our control with regard to curriculum and professional development. So in the 47 points that we did receive out of 60 for student achievement, we had 4.4 4, um, points out of 7.5 in English language arts achievement, 4 points out of 7.5 in math achievement, 3.9 out of 5 in science, 5.4 out of 7.5 for the ELA subgroup, 6.3 out of 7.5 for math subgroups, 14.4 out of 15 for our graduation rate, and 8.9 out of 10 for our subgroup total overall. And the spreadsheet that has the breakdown of all of the district performance review indicators is on the website or will be on the website as soon as we post the results. Um, and you can also go back to the student achievement report that was given in October of this year for more information about where these scores came from in terms of the um, park assessments from 27, 2018. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Dyer. Do any members of the board have any questions with regards to uh, the CUSAC report? I actually do. This is why um, So the um, uh, instruction program, um, those test results are strictly from PARC, right? So there's nothing in terms of SAT or the other alternate means that a student would have of fulfilling the requirement for testing. That's right? correct. At this time, the way that those scores are determined are just from um, l this year, it was the 2018 PARC. Next year, it'll be the 2019 New Jersey Student Learning Assessment. Which will still have the same uh, requirements for um, sitting for it and the same alternative um, assessments that can be used toward graduation? The change that the Department of Education just announced is that students will not have to sit for the park or the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment in order to be eligible for one of the alternate pathways to show um, proficiency in math and language arts. There was a time period where sitting for the park was required before you could consider SAT scores, ACT scores, or any of the other alternative pathways. What they've just announced is that those alternative pathways are available regardless of whether or not the student takes the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment. Okay. So, Piggybacking on that, um, I would strongly um, urge the board to develop a resolution that could be um, provided to New, Jer New Jersey School Boards Association for perhaps inclusion in their policies um, to include other forms of, in of assessment in rating a district in terms of CUSAC because it, it seems a little unfair that if students are allowed to take other forms, uh, utilize other forms of assessment, that that would not be looked at as part of a district's assessment. I, it seems to me like it would be a good idea to have those included. So I'm um, just putting it out there that um, that's something I think we should think about moving forward. Yeah, we can put that on the curriculum agenda. I think that's a worthwhile suggestion. Any other questions or comments with regards to the CUSAC report? Okay. Um, moving on to Board of Education updates. There are no legislative updates this month, but Mr. Sanflip, I believe you have a brief Wall Community Alliance update. Uh, yeah, Wall Community Alliance. Um, Matt. Wait. Sorry? Is that, is that S1 attached, the CUSAC report? Like, how come we're not getting Go ahead. <clears throat> um, Last two Thursdays ago, Thursdays ago, every day that was. Um, so uh, they are still looking for volunteers um, to help out with project graduation. 
Um, so it is not too late for those of you in YouTube land out there um, to, uh, to sign up and um, to become part of Project Graduation. I know that they're looking for people um, to ride the buses um, back and forth and to sort of chaperone the buses. Um, and uh, I mean, that was a bulk of what the meeting was about. Um, they've done a great job. I know that they're um, also focused on getting everything together for the Meatball Gala, which will come back again next year. Um, and um, and Officer Cadigan, who was there again, um, shared you know some other information um, on um, you know some different things uh, in terms of drug prevention um, and and also different things that the uh, the police department um, you know have been um, have been doing um, you know for the town um, and uh, and it was uh, it was a nice meeting. Um, if you guys have any questions on it. If anybody <clears throat> out in YouTube land is looking to volunteer, do you have a contact name or information? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Robin, you have that right. <laughs> um, I think I, I was I was a like a pinch hitter again at the Wall Alliance meeting. Um, they could also contact Kristen Scott at the high school, okay. who is helping to coordinate um, buses and chaperones and things like that. So that might be an easier contact. Okay, thank you. That sounds great. Thanks, and I don't have to scroll through a gajillion <laughs> emails to find it. But thank you, Chris, for. Uh, uh, pinch hitting. Pinch hitting. Uh, I really appreciate very it. Very welcome. That enabled me to go to um, cabaret night at the yes. high school, which was just amazing. So thanks. Awesome. Um, actually, Mrs. Wadniak, you can keep your mic on because uh, at this time, if you could provide us with an overview of this month's policy meeting. The policy committee met on June 6th from approximately 5.15 p.m. to 6.15 p.m. in attendance. Allison Connolly, Cheryl Dyer, myself, Mike MacArthur, and Chris Sanfilippo. Um, the superintendent, while going through the QSEC process, uh, noticed that several policies and regulations had not been updated and brought them to the committee's attention. And those are the ones that are incorporated um, for first reading. We looked at um, 1240, the policy and regulation, which is evaluation of the superintendent. And the revision includes the word annual. Um, in referring to the performance report stipulating that um, and also stipulating that the evaluation would be overseen by the board president. Um, we looked at uh, Title I district-wide parental involvement and that one, that policy is going to be um, um, on hold because we don't have a district-wide Title I presence. We have Title I funds at certain of our schools so um, we sent it back and the administration will provide us more information to see if we actually need to have um, that policy. Um, we talked about 6220, which is budget preparation. Um, it memorializes changes in the process, um, which reflect the current practice that resulted from moving the annual elections from April to November. Um, we talked about political contributions, 6360, um, and the changes are in, in response to changes in administrative code. Um, and we also discussed the possibility of including in the big spec, bid spec documents um, that business entities include a disclosure of um, other contracts that they've, they've um, uh, engaged in within the district in that current year, um, or just simply requiring a disclosure statement from all bidders um, to um, aid in tracking a cumulative um, donation. We looked at uh, school district travel. Uh, with We recommend some minor revisions. Um, let's see. Uh, student activity fund. The existing policy was replaced because of changes in administrative code. Um, and some of the highlights were that um, we stipulate that the student activities uh, um, funds be turned into the principal's office and um, to memorialize that the deposits will be made within 24 hours and uh, how the unallocated and unexpended funds would be distributed uh, going forward. And so the board um, is going to recommend for next week that we approve on first reading 1240, 6360, 6220, 6471, and 6660. Um, we also um, discussed the second readings, which were use of school facilities, uh, policy on bomb threats, and parental organizations. And the committee had no additional changes from the prior month, so we are recommending 
adoption on second reading. Um, in addition to that, um, we, excuse me, in addition to that, we um, took a look at uh, news media relations. And so we'll be um, looking to have that approved on an expedited basis. So we'll have asked the board for a motion to suspend the rules of the bylaw next, uh, next meeting. Um, and this policy hadn't been reviewed uh, or revised since 2009. And so um, some of the highlights were addition of the board president as a chief communications representative of the board, um, that prior approval should be must be given for staff or students representing or speaking on behalf of the district or the board um, and that the staff is um, not prohibited from speaking with or engaging with media as long as they don't imply that they're speaking on behalf of the board or the district and that they um, express that they are speaking on their own behalf as a private citizen um, and um, we recommend that we adopt that on expedited reading we also looked at school district provided technology devices to students. And um, so since we're going to have a one-to-one -one initiative at the high school next year, uh, it beho behooves us to have a policy in place. And so um, we will be moving that for first reading next month. We'll take another look at the particulars um, at our next committee meeting so that we'll have it all in place uh, for the beginning of next school year. And we also did talk about the, um, uh, briefly about the CUSAC report. Um, and I guess that's it. Thank you. Does the board have any questions for Mrs. Wadniak? Seeing none, I believe that you are also uh, responsible for the personnel minutes this month as well? Yes. Um, the personnel committee met on June 5th from approximately 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Mrs. Dyer, myself, and Dory Malloy were present. We reviewed the, uh, the working draft of the Human Resources Report for June. Um, we reviewed Mrs. Dyer's attendance for the month. Um, we talked about uh, the custodial supervisor co uh, contract. Um, they had a few requests with regard to their contract, and um, the committee reviewed the requests and agreed um, to support the two changes. The, um, we talked about RAP employee contracts and sick leave, and Mrs. Dyer explained to the committee the new earned sick leave law and how it affects our RAP employees. The additional costs associated with earned sick leave will be factored into the fees charged to parents for the RAP program. Staffing ratios was another topic of the committee, and we asked uh, Mrs. Dyer to review the staffing ratios in each school because there appears to be an imbalance with regard to administrator staff and guidance counselor student ratios. The committee asked that Mrs. Dyer attempt to equalize those ratios if possible. Um, we also talked about a WTEA sidebar for clubs and advisors, and we reviewed those uh, sidebars prepared by the WTEA with recommendations from the administration for stipends to be paid for new clubs and other advisor positions, and um, the committee recommends approving the sidebar next week. Um, and we also had a discussion about the um, WTEA negotiations. Respectfully submitted. All right, are there any questions with regards to the personnel minutes? Okay, uh, next up is the curriculum and instruction minutes, um, which Mrs. Malloy prepared. Um, however, we don't really need to review them because what happened in curriculum this month was a preview of the presentation that Dr. Gleason uh, and the administrators uh, provided with us, to, for us, excuse me, tonight. So that is how the curriculum minutes read. Um, and I'm assuming since you didn't have any questions then, you don't have any now. So we will move on to the F and F minutes, Mr. Adonisio. Thank you. So FNF met on June 3rd. We started at 5.08 and we ended at 7.50 p.m. In attendance was President Allison Connolly, Superintendent Cheryl Dyer, Business Administrator Brian Smythe, Facilities Manager Robert Romano, uh, John Sullivan, Dory Malloy, and I was there. Uh, Without going too in depth and putting everybody to sleep, all these, uh, this was posted on the website along with the attachments. Um, Brown and Brown uh, attended the meeting to kind of give us a little uh, update on the self insurance plan. Um, we're within budget uh, so far up to, the, uh, up to April. Um, you know, sometimes the, the, 
the final couple months of the year, there's uh, claims that are unanticipated, but right now everything is uh, going along very well. Uh, and we are in the second year of our uh, contract with Horizon. Uh, third party administrator in dental insurance. Uh, th this was something a little interesting. Uh, it's recommended that we do a one year renewal with Delta Dental uh, because that'll give us a savings of $24,000. If we did a two year uh, agreement with them, we'd only have $9,000 in savings. So we're recommending the one year renewal. Uh, I guess when you think about it, it doesn't really make sense, but we're going to save uh, uh, $24,000 by doing that way. Uh, we also discussed the $1.8 million held by Horizon as working capital. Uh, this is the money that they hold from the district that uh, they, as claims come in, they, they take it out and then we replenish it. Uh, Horizon does not collect interest on working capital. Uh, so the district for the 1920 school year will be looking into setting up with Horizon a separate account where they can debit uh, a separate account we have, and that way we can earn interest on that money. Uh, again, Horizon's company policy is not to collect interest on working capital, and they don't do that with anybody they deal with. Uh, a question was also asked, does the district offer a vision plan? And we currently do not. Brown and Brown's going to be going out to get quotes for voluntary coverage. Um, and from a district standpoint, we've been very happy with the service Brown and Brown's uh, been providing. Uh, enterprise account update. Um, so far for the year, we're in the black, about $40,000. The RAP program is also in good shape. Um, you got the update on the, uh, you know, the additional $3, about $3 increase per week starting in September to make up for the new law where we have to provide sick leave. Uh, what else we have? Uh, the facility projects updates. Uh, Mr. Romano, he gave us uh, an update. The attachments were on the website. Uh, paving projects going to start at the end of the month. Uh, new AC unit on the superintendent's office uh, was going to be in next week, which was probably last week, and I think it's in. Um, painting in the high school auditorium for $17,000 is going to be done by a co-op contractor. Uh, there was a dimmer uh, switch that needs to be installed. That's going to be done at the end of the month. That was in a previous month's uh, minutes. Uh, phase one of our AC project has started at the high school. Uh, they started running wires. Uh, Monmouth County has received information on the West Belmar driveway and we're waiting to hear back from them as part of the shared services for the paving. And we also had a discussion on turning the paved playground area at Old Mill School into additional parking for school events after school hours. Uh, you know, the, we, the committee felt that this was going to help with the parking program for special events as well as uh, using an area that's already paved. Um, this could have uh, many benefits for us. Uh, going forward, and we'll have probably updates on that um, when we hear back about uh, the additional paving. Uh, Long-range facilities plan. Uh, Mr. Smythe met with the architect uh, the Friday before the meeting. Uh, at the end of the month, they're going to have a meeting, and they're going to schedule walkthroughs of all the buildings, and we will be updated as that progresses. Uh, we had a conversation about OPA requests. Um, and the strain it's putting on the staff due to the number of documents that must be reviewed. So as an example, um, if you submit an OPA request uh, and you want everything pertaining to the word that has to do with contract um, from multiple individuals, you could get back hundreds of emails uh, with that, some of them that couldn't even pertain to anything that you're, you're actually asking for. So the only way you know what they pertain to is somebody actually has to go in and review them all and make sure that there isn't any confidential information in there. They have to sit there and redact it. Um, so the committee is uh, asking the business office and everybody in the district to track all OPA requests with the total hours spent by all employees to get a true reading for how much time um, and money actually goes into filling requests. Uh, also effective July 1st, 2019, the district will be charging for OPA requests that are deemed too, to be too large as per law. So there's law on this um, and, you know, I guess would advice a council, uh, depending if something's questionable, uh, it will be reviewed. Uh, Finance and Facilities Advisory Committee. Uh, we gave the FNF committee uh, an update on the advisory committee uh, about the suggestion of adding a PTA member. Uh, the PTAs uh, will pick somebody amongst themselves to come to the meeting. Uh, 
the committee, uh, the, uh, the advisory committee is not looking to be charged with a particular job. They're just looking to suggest ideas and have discussions. Uh, on the, uh, for next week's meeting, an action item is gonna be the Neptune Aquatic Center rental agreement uh, for approval. Um, we did that last year. Also, the ICE rental agreement will be on. Uh, stale check resolution, every year we uh, have that on the agenda. There's checks from vendors that for whatever reason they don't cash them. Um, I guess they're independently wealthy. Um, so, and, and sometimes some staff, so uh, they're gonna reach out to the appropriate people and um, see if they actually want their checks. Uh, special, uh, also something else for the uh, action item next week for approval, special service professional service providers. Um, this comes from our director of special services, uh, something that we uh, uh, vote on every year. Uh, annual bids and quotes, uh, our HVAC repair rates are less than our current year prices of $80 an hour. So we're staying with the same contractor um, at a rate of $78 an hour for the 1920 school year. Uh, gas went out um, and we only received one bid which is higher than our current year so we're probably gonna go out to bid uh, again for it as well as our um, the new service we have ed data uh, which will also go out and get bids for us um, end of year fund transfer to reserve accounts uh, the committee recommends a transfer of emer to emergency maintenance capital reserve and emergency reserve accounts which would be in June this this coming meeting um, the roof replacement at operations building, uh, something we talked about. So we're looking to advertise this in September, award it in October, and have the work done over Christmas break. Uh, that should uh, yield some benefit to us because uh, roofing contractors really aren't busy uh, in December. And uh, since it's not an educational building, that work can be done anytime, so we might as well try to take advantage of uh, any savings we can get. Uh, District-wide facilities condition assessment. Uh, that goes hand in hand with the uh, the walkthroughs and the the architect. So once that starts, we'll we will be updated. Uh, the HVAC improvements phase two. Uh, the attachments are online, and the committee recommends that four rooms at Old Mill School be part of phase two, uh, which include changing unit vents. Uh, originally, that wasn't part of it, but it makes sense to have a part of it now. Uh, review of RFPs for the demographic study. Uh, we had a discussion on the study after reviewing the proposals. Uh, the committee recommends Ross Haber and Associates for 12500 uh, This is a carryover from a couple meetings now, and we've had discussions, so we feel uh, that'll best suit us. And then finally, the big one, uh, student transportation facility at the Mammoth Executive Airport. Uh, we invited uh, Mr. Alan Antaki. Uh, he's one of the partners at Mammoth Airport, Executive Airport. He was the one that reached out to us. Uh, he talked about his proposal to the board and offered the uh, different piece of property on the back portion of the airport. Uh, Mr. Smythe and Superintendent Dyer, they were actually going to go out the following day to visit the property, do a little field trip. Uh, you know, we informed him at the meeting that the district was looking for a 10-year commitment. Um, up front, if we went with that piece of land, it would probably only be about five years. So basically, we'd spend a lot of money to move in, and then we'd be looking to go someplace else right away, which wouldn't make sense. Uh, for us, we're, we're trying to solve a long-term problem. Uh, the most important thing is this is all contingent on the township uh, giving approval uh, for this back portion of the airport for uh, there to be car storage. Uh, he was very clear about that. We understood it. Uh, the following day, we had a liaison meeting with the township, and we were very clear about that, that um, in order for us to get bus parking, um, he needs to get the parking on the back side of the airport. Uh, it's also... Uh, worth noting that this portion of the airport uh, you can't see it from uh, the street it doesn't affect any residential housing it doesn't affect any really any commercial uh, operations um, on this street already you have uh, big trucks going down it so buses will not um, uh, hurt the area by any stretch of the imagination and it would be in wall which would be a, a something that we've said from day one that we would uh, continue to try to investigate um, and you know even though with the Howell proposal we, we didn't stop looking so um, hopefully you know we're waiting to hear back from the township on this and uh, hopefully we'll be able to move forward with it and uh, do a feasibility study which would be the next step in the process but we're not going to run out to a feasibility study until we get uh, confirmation from the township that they're at least um, open to the proposal or willing to uh, 
to do it. So next words, uh, next week's meeting, uh, we have uh, votes on item number 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, and 18. And that was my report for the month. Any questions? I'm going to ask Mr. Smythe just to follow up on that last item uh, regarding the airport and Mr. Antaki. Yeah, I had a conversation with Mr. Antaki today. Uh, he's still working on his proposal to submit to the municipality, so that has not been submitted. Uh, he indicated that he would copy me uh, on the correspondence he provides, and once I receive it, I'll provide it to the Board of Education in, in the packet on Friday. Yeah. We, we did our part. I mean, we certainly, uh, you know, to be clear, we certainly expressed it to the, you know, uh, Committeeman Farrell was there and, and Business Administrator um, Bertrand, and, you know, we told them that w in order for us to be able to move forward, the, the town has to work with them and, and provide, you know, let them park cars there. And, and you know, at least from, from our standpoint, it makes sense because it, it's land that's not being used, and um, it certainly can help the district and, and everybody. So hopefully... Uh, it moves forward and, and we solve, uh, finally put uh, a problem that's been lurking to uh, bed permanently. Just to clarify, we're not currently waiting on the township to get back to us for anything because well, they haven't right. been presented yet. No, right. So, so once they're presented and, you know, we get an answer, then we can move forward with anything we need to do. Yes. Are there any other questions for Mr. Adonisio with regards to the F&F &F minutes? I just have one comment. Um, so I'm glad that there's a discussion about using the Old Mill School Playground because um, for many, many events, for many, many years, people park on the bridge yes. and they don't realize that it's not legal to park on the bridge. So I remember at the craft fair, we'd have the police come and I'd have to make announcements, anybody parked on the bridge, you know, or they get ticketed or towed. So, you know, I, I, that'll, that'll, help it, solve that problem it will i mean I, I actually drove by there today uh when i was working and i mean there, there's always cars parked out in the street and we don't and the idea is not to take away the playground we want to keep the playground but for these events at night when you know you have such a, a large influx of people to have additional parking so that's we think that'll benefit us in the, in the long run um and and i might add that um mrs dyer um it may be a good idea to encourage um the administration at Old Mill School to somehow inform the parents that um, they're not supposed to park on the bridge um, to save them any hassle in the future. Thank you, Mrs. Zawadniak. Any other comments on the FNF minutes? Last but not least, Mr. Sanfilippo, PR. Good evening. Uh, Public Relations uh, Committee met on June 5th uh, from 515 to 550 in attendance um, were Superintendent Cheryl Dyer, um, myself, um, Mr. Adnesio, Mr. Wondrak, and pinch hitting was Robin Zawadniak. Um, okay, so um, we spoke about a couple different things um, in terms of um, ways that we can improve uh, community relations. Um, we spoke about the possibility of allowing the Facebook page to be shared, not necessarily commented, but shared. Um, one of the things, if you're not familiar with Facebook, um, is that basically what you're looking at is sort of what you get news about, right? So it's, I don't know whether it's cookies or whatever it is, but um, if you are looking at a certain page, um, you will be prompted with updates from that page. Um, so what sharing would allow um, the district to do is to then share that out and then multiple people who um, are looking at the district's page could then be shared out to other people and it sort of um, gives us a better availability to, um, I guess, disseminate um, all of the great things that are happening at the school district. Um, so uh, that was one thing that we talked about. Um, we also talked about putting out a list. Um, uh, for uh, recent um, for schools where uh, our seniors are um, going to uh, in the fall um, and also uh, for the services so there was um, obviously we had uh, tonight um, service um, inductees and people who um, came in and um, we appreciate all their work um, so we were uh, thinking about uh, maybe putting a newspaper article out um, just a list not anything specific to um, to any students or anything like that individually um, but just sort of a composite of all of the different school districts uh, or all the different schools that um, our uh, our graduates are going off to 
Um, we also spoke a little bit about the spring newsletter um, and also um, other opportunities um, that arise within the district um, in order for us to, um, you know, to, to recognize achievements of students, um, to recognize uh, achievements of teachers um, and staff that we have in the district. Um, so we always have a uh, list of all of the different um, students of the month in the high school and things like that. Um, so we were thinking maybe we could have something for um, the intermediate school and then also, um, you know, the elementary schools as well. Um, get some of the, the sort of younger blood um, out to some of the meetings and have photo opportunities and all sorts of different things that um, is what public relations are all about. Um, so that is for, uh, for that one. And then also planning for the fall public forum. Um, so one of the things that we talked about, we don't have any dates obviously yet. It's gonna be in the fall at some point in time. Um, but we wanted to, um, to welcome input uh, from the community members, from parents, from staff, um, and anyone else that would like to contribute towards this. Um, so this is basically a calling out to folks, um, you know, towards a forum, um, you know, to uh, give us ideas and brainstorming on discussion topics, uh, goals, et cetera. Um, and um, I would um, also um, put a little nice um, kind of like magical wand touch on that for it to be, you know, positive goals, things like that. So, um, and that's it submitted by myself oh was there one other thing um oh there was one other thing we were talking about um eva applegates um the the Im memorial um chair and um we talked about how we have a placard at um the high school um there was a placard here in the intermediate school um but as you can see the the um the chairs are fabric um so we want to put it on the back and i believe it's the first one right there Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I guess we were going to try to take some measurements and something like that and to have it there um, because that would be really nice. Thank you, Mr. Sanfilippo. You are very are there any welcome. questions with regards to the PR? Um, I know it's only tangentially related, but the uh, Crimson Knights Foundation, who we've been trying to work with through the Public Relations Committee, had a wonderful event um, this past Friday night. It was a uh, community movie night with um, live performances by local dance schools and local musicians, and um, they showed uh, Mary Poppins Returns. Um, the, some of the PTOs helped out by selling uh, refreshments, and it was just a very, like, homey, easy night, and I, I commend the CKF and everybody involved um, on that and a, and a wonderful evening. Yeah, I, I apologize. I missed that. My wife and kids were there. Although Tristan was not there. He had a baseball game that day. so um, but It's okay. We can't I be every place at once. Uh, I'm going to clone myself. Okay. Um, yeah. Any old business or new? Okay, seeing. Madam President. Yes. I, I would just like to say, uh, you know, of course, the baseball. I had the opportunity to go down for the championship game. Uh, superintendent was there. Um, so we had a nice little showing. There was a, a nice, I mean, a, a nice showing of wall people. And they truly played like a championship team. I mean, it was a great game. And, and it was uh, very, uh, it was just great to be there and, and witness that. I mean, and I've had the opportunity to go to several championship uh, games. And, I mean, they, the athletic ability of some of these students is just incredible. So just wanted to put that out there. And also commended for their sportsmanship now, too. That's wonderful. No, I'll, I'll piggyback that on Ralph because Ralph piggybacked on me earlier. So, um, by the way, um, and, and, and I know Coach Schmidt is gone, um, but uh, Coach Schmidt um, has been a wonderful, wonderful coach for many, 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 many years here. He uh, coached baseball and football when I was um, in high school. Um, and um, if you've played baseball and you understand the concept of chatter and teamwork and different things like that, and when we say chatter, we're kind of like talking about, you know, rooting on your pitcher and players and, um, you know, really putting together um, fantastic squads. Um, just so, you know, I know he's gone, but um, if he wants to go back and look at any YouTube videos at any point in time, um, I, I, 
sincerely um, appreciate everything that he's done. And um, one thing I would um, let him know and, and uh, is that um, a lot of the things that he sort of taught us on the baseball diamond then also gets instilled into our kids on the baseball diamond. Um, I know Mike's around, um, you know, the, the North Wall um, baseball fields, um, and, um, and we, we sort of um, echo a lot of, um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 just the, the character building things, all of the stuff, um, you know, that he embodies and, uh, and brings forth. And um, so, you know, I was, when we, he was getting the word, I was thinking about like the thousands and thousands and thousands of kids that he's, you know, had such a such a great um, mentorship and coaching relationship with. Um, it's just um, it's it's really really wonderful, and, and and I'll miss the guy a lot. And, um, so anyway, that's it. He's not going anywhere. No. No. Way to start rumors. Oh. Uh, don't start. Um, uh, I just I'm just going <laughs> to add because I'm a baseball person too, and not to take anything away from the other teams, but. The score of that championship game was, is really deceiving. It was not a blowout at 10-2. It was really a nice game. And um, I think I read that Trey Dombrowski, I know they didn't want to focus too much on any single player, but the pitcher did not walk a batter all season. And so he was really a tremendous pitcher, and he certainly deserves the acknowledgement that he's receiving. Um, it, really fun to watch. He was great. Awesome. Okay. Mr. Wanjak. Take the opportunity to uh, acknowledge the bus drivers. And as another level of security for the students in this township, and if those weren't stories about people who care and know what's going on and know all the kids on the team and get them to where they got to go, you just can't put a price on that. Thank you. Mrs. Wadniak. Um, being that I'm not um, the biggest generalized sports fan, although I do appreciate it, and I do go to a lot of a lot of different games. Um, I just wanted to also highlight some of the many, many, many events that um, were around May and June. Um, a lot of which I attended from from uh, poetry and essay contest winning presentations of the um, uh, Wall Township Environmental. Environmental Advisory Committee, thank you. I knew I was gonna get that one wrong. Um, and um, between that, the Pre-Engineering Academy graduation, um, we had uh, an all-wall string concert, B the Business and Finance Academy graduation, Senior Awards Bank, choir concerts and band concerts, and the NNDCC Change of Command Cabaret Night, thank you again for allowing me to go to that. Um, concert at Old Mill School, which um, had a visit from Dr. Repolette. Is that how you pronounce his name? At West Belmar. What, what I, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Old Mill. no it worry. It was at West Belmar. Um, and um, the Renaissance Luncheon at the high school, and the, the probably cherry on top was the primary school graduation, and that was just adorable, and the children accomplished so much. I recognize the graduates from last year, and, and you can just see the maturity. There's so many wonderful things going on, and a, another shout out to Dr. Gleason. The, um, the leaps and bounds on attention to curriculum over the past several years is just amazing and exciting um, to hear, so thank you. Minute. I'm sorry. Um, I was going to wait for superintendent updates next week to mention Dr. Repolette, but the commissioner of education did visit one of our schools this past week. Um, he came to West Belmar School, spent quite a bit of time meeting with the third grade students and hearing about what they learned this year and then also attended the concert. So that was very nice. We were happy to welcome him to the district. Are we good to go? We're good. Okay. So at this time, um, we will open the floor for public comment. Um, on any item uh, on which you would like to speak, uh, pursuant to policy 0167. Um, well, 
Wyatt the Burbage Fago. Um, I don't know if anyone got my emails about an OPA request that I put in. I believe it was seven days ago, seven business days. Um, is Did you guys receive it? I believe I emailed it to everyone on the board and to Mr. Smythe and to Mrs. Conley. I just want to know if you guys received it. Yes, it was received. Okay. Is there any time frame of when I will be getting back those documents? I, th I thought I would be hearing back a response within seven days. Um, Mr. Dubrovich Fago, I this is public comment. So if you have anything else to talk about, do that. And if there's questions that Mr. Smythe or anybody else can return to, we'll do that when you're finished. So, okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then, I mean, I just saw this today about the OPA request with how um, the strain that it's putting on 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 staff and everything. And uh, I just have to say that if if things weren't going the way they were, things wouldn't have to be opered. I think that's fairly obvious. People weren't doing things that weren't right. Things wouldn't have to be opered. Um, and f to be having to pay for them um, when they're deemed to be large requests, is there going to be like a specific type of amount or something? Like, is there going to be guidelines about that? Because I think that needs to be clearer than just what is deemed by an opinion. It needs to be, I think, written in, in stone of what will be done and because I think we'll go into a gray area there in the future so I would look into that and uh, as again my question is as I did ask for documents about seven business days ago I would like to know when I will be getting them back um, and that's that's my question I was going to email today but I thought I would get an email back today with something from someone here but um, again I would just like to know when I'm getting the documents so we can move forward um, and I just want to move forward in this this way. It could go in other ways, but we'll do it this way first. So um, that's my question, if that could be answered, and then my comment is done. Typically, I direct the people on the day is to answer when everybody's done so they can put all their answers together. OK, Thanks. I hope we'll, we'll get an answer on that, though. Hi, Betsy Cross, I live in Wall. I just want to say, Ms. Connolly, you don't typically direct people on the day as to answer people's questions, so I'm not really sure why you said that. You normally wrap it up and get out of here. So that would be great if you could answer people's questions. You are the board president. Um, why it's emails, I mean, why it's OPA's request was due today. So Mr. Smythe just did not reply. So if he could give an answer why he did not reply, I'd appreciate it. I think he took a couple of vacation days last week. You know, we have, I have Oprah's in from April I still don't have. So the excuses that we get from Mr. Smythe of why he can't provide information is absurd. Um, and you can't just, you know, come up with now we're going to start charging for Oprah requests. If you weren't doing so many illegal things, people wouldn't have to put in Oprah requests. So, um... I think that's that should be your first goal, Mr. Smythe. Um, I'll read you the definition. Uh, a custodian is mandated to work with requester to reach a reasonable solution first and before any fees can be charged. That solution must accommodate interest of both the requester and the school district. Mr. Smythe never does that. I'm sure anything to do with Cheryl's illegal contract is going to cost over $1,000. So Mr. Smythe will come up with very large numbers, why he isn't getting back on uh, the missing emails of Mr. Smythe and Mr. Eric Brophy is extremely disturbing. It's been two months. Uh, so en enough with wasting uh, time on that. Very sad, we had only one retiree here tonight. We used to have a packed room. The principals used to talk about them. The morale is in the toilet and wall. Thank you, Ms. Dyer, for that. Um, I wouldn't want to come here either if I was retiring. Um, Mr. Smythe and Mr. Adonisio, you're the chairman of FNF. We have $14 million sitting in the bank, and I'm trying to figure out why we're not getting interest. Um, I've written to two towns that I don't live in. They get back to me so quickly. 
uh, there's a, there seems to be a problem here with Mr. Smythe again. So I'd like to know all the bank fees. What I don't want to have to do is open all the bank statements because once I open all the bank statements and Mr. Smythe is going to want to charge me for them. You should go to your bank. You can go online and download from TD Bank like everybody else can and summarize all the fees you're paying and try and figure out what you were doing. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Other towns are making, Princeton made a million dollars more than we did, a million. And you're here squabbling, trying to give raises to people while you're opening up Cheryl's contract, giving Cheryl's secretary money. Mr. Smythe, I'm, tr I'm sure you're going to try and have your contract in there on June 25th. Um, we need to see any changes in anybody's contracts and revision marking. Because the problem is the board, nobody knows what they're approving. Uh, we know that from Mr. Brophy. He, he thought um, we were taking back vacation days when we were giving Cheryl more. Uh, that's why we all need to see these emails that Mr. Smythe is hiding. Um, go over the quickly over the yearbook. My son is a freshman and his name was in the yearbook six times, five times it was wrong. Simple stuff, you can't even get people's names right. Um, and throwing other people under the bus. You have a full year class. This, the, the advisor maybe should get money deducted when they keep making mistakes like this. This doesn't even make any sense. Go get the band list, go get the playlist, and, and have the students check the names. Uh, this is crazy. I, I've said we'd like our $110 back, Ms. Dyer. I'm still waiting to hear from you. We'd like a check this week. We're not paying for it. Um, why weren't the top 10 students highlighted here today? This is a school. You know, it's great that we had the, the athletes, but you know, that was the premier thing. I would have rather had the people going into the military first. I would have rather have seen the students here. I know you did the Renaissance luncheon, but that's not enough. Um, WTEA contracts. Anything that's been changed needs to be in revision marking. So 48 hours before, the Friday before you're voting on it, everything in revision marking, the 16 contract and the 19 contract, don't be up here approving it unless we have it because uh, I don't want to have any problems again. And Mr. Smite's contract, take, take it off the table. He, he, you shouldn't even be considering it right now. Thank you, Mrs. Cross. Um, I'm still waiting to hear why Mr. S Mr. Th Smite's thank you, Mrs. Cross. Uh, W-2s don't make his contracts, Mr. Yeah. Gross. I know. So are thank you sitting you, on Cross. that? Five minutes I'd and 12 seconds. Thank I would you. like you to get back to me on that. Thank you. I'm also waiting for the attorney Mrs. RFP Cross. summary because I have no idea why we've rehired the attorney. Thank you, Mrs. Cross. Um, Five please, minutes and 22 seconds. Ms. Connolly, m please direct Mr. Smythe to answer my Ms. questions Cross. on the bank fees and the interest. Five minutes and 30 seconds. And I'd like everything back in writing. Mrs. I have Cross, reached your time out is to up. a number you, of Cross. state agencies, a number of state Thank agencies, you. Mr. Gross. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else for public comment? Okay, seeing none, we will close public comment. Um, Mr. Smythe, would you like to respond to any of the questions with regards to Oprah? Yeah, uh, I'll do my best to make sure there's a response provided tomorrow for any uh, Oprahs that are outstanding, uh, but I'll be sure to provide you some correspondence tomorrow. Uh, with regard to some of the other public comments, uh, with regard to the concern for uh, the district charging uh, fees for uh, requests that are considered uh, excessive, uh, you know, with some of the types of requests we're receiving, uh, they're very generic in nature, six-month time periods, emails between multiple individuals with common words like a date, uh, a last name of an, uh, an employee, uh, or the word contract. Um, we've had our technology department attempting to do searches that uh, we could utilize to pr provide responsive records. Uh, but uh, our searches, uh, we have one search that turns up 16,000 um, pages. And um, down. Mrs. With, Cross, please don't call out. Mrs. Cross, you're out of order. Please don't call out. Ridiculous response. He knows I With regard to. With regard to uh, interest, um, 
Hey, Princeton does a, a great job. They don't pay any fees. This is the arrangement they have with their bank. Uh, we don't have that arrangement, but uh, and we can't use Princeton's bank because uh, the Bank of Princeton is located in Princeton. Uh, with regard to districts in Monmouth County, uh, if you look at the interest earned by Wall Township over the past five years, uh, out of the 53 districts that report interest in their audit, uh, each year, we rank 16 out of the 53 with regard to uh, earned interest. Uh, if you look at 2018, uh, which is the last audited year, the 2017-18 year, out of the 53 districts in Monmouth County, we rank nine. Um, so there's eight districts in Monmouth County that earned more interest than Wall Township did in the 2017-18 school year. With regard to, oh, that's a good question. Uh, three of those school districts passed a. Three of those. I answer my question, not your own. Nobody cares. I would just point out that three of those eight districts passed referendums in 2016 or 17 uh, to the tune of 28 to 30 million dollars, and those funds uh, attribute to increased interest. Um, I, I don't know the specifics of the other banks, but it is something that we we do. Mrs. Cross, do. please stop calling out. So, no, no one interrupted you when you spoke. Well, he's not answering my question. Well, that, that's 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 well, for another. Why are you, continue, why are you letting him continue, Ms. So, Cross? with regard to the comment of Mrs. interest that the district earns in Monmouth County, which would be the comparable districts. Uh, for the 2017-18 school year, which is the last audited year, uh, we ranked ninth out of the 53 districts that reported interest in their audit. So not it's not viewed as a concern in the current year. Nothing from you? Okay. Uh, at this time, I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I need a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.